Welcome to a video series on learning version control with Git. Today we'll talk about some kind of a scary topic, merge conflicts. The first thing you should keep in mind is this, you can always undo a merge. This means you can go back to the state before conflicts occurred. You're always able to undo and start fresh. Also, a conflict will only ever handicap yourself and not your teammates. That's because in Git, conflicts can only occur locally on a developer's machine and not on the server. Let's start by looking at how a conflict occurs and what it actually is. In Git, there are a couple of operations that integrate changes. For example, when merging, rebasing or cherry picking. A great thing about Git is that it makes merging extremely easy. In most cases, Git will figure out how to integrate new changes. However, there's a handful of situations where you might have to step in and tell Git what to do. Most notably, this is when changing the same file. Even in this case, Git will most likely figure it out on its own. But if two people changed the same lines in that same file, or if one person decided to delete it while the other person decided to modify it, Git simply cannot know what is correct. It will mark the file as having a conflict and you'll have to solve it before you can continue. Let's look at this in real life. Let's say we want to integrate new changes from our development branch. We start the merge operation with git merge development. And boom, here it is. Git tells us that a conflict occurred. Let's take a look at the situation. Git status tells us we have unmerged paths so files that it couldn't merge. We also see that the problem in this case was that both versions were modified in the same place. If we open this file in an editor, we'll see what such a conflict state looks like. Git marked the problematic area in the file by enclosing it in angle brackets. Additionally, it tells us which branch those changes came from. Head, of course, and the other branch we tried to merge in. The line with those equal signs separates the two conflicting changes. Our job is now to clean up these lines. When we're done, the file should look exactly as we want it to look. Correct code and no more bracket markers. Maybe your code is correct, maybe it's a teammate's code, or maybe a mixture between the two. The most basic way to do this is indeed with your text editor. Change the file to look like it should look. Then save it, and on the command line, run git add in the name of the file. This tells git that you resolved the conflict. Finally, you need to commit your resolution like any other change, and this completes the conflict situation. Let's replay the conflict once more, because if you have a dedicated merge tool installed and configured, there's a more elegant way. Simply call git merge tool and git will open your tool of choice for every conflict. A merge tool provides a better view on the situation. The two conflicting changes are on the left and right and you can determine how the final resolution should look like in a visual way. Choose left or right or edit the final version yourself. Saving and quitting the tool will tell Git that this conflict is resolved, just like calling git add manually. Finally, here's how to undo a merge, in case you want to start over with resolving your conflicts. On the command line, a simple git merge abort will do this for you. Always keep this option in mind. This should give you the confidence that you can't break anything. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.